Good afternoon. Thank you guys for hearing me. I've been here before trying to take care of spending and controlling spending, and I never thought that I'd be fighting the city on, two, on Proposition 2 and the city's own Proposition 1 that city council, the mayor put in, put it, suggested and put in place to control water and sewer rates. I can't believe it. There weren't just a few people. It was like a convention from the city down there. There were all sorts of people from the city and all sorts of lawyers. This fee is going to be big. If, if they are, if maybe they aren't going to give it to you, billing, because they probably make enough money off the bond issues that they don't have to. But there were plenty of lawyers down there. They spent jeans of time. They provided me with 18,000 pages worth of documents, records, and things to look at. Some that were delivered on Friday night. So I've been looking at a lot of this in my spare time, which is a lot of records. But this is, this is not Proposition 1. This is a city charter. This is Article 9, Section 20 of the city charter. This is the Constitution. We are the people. The people are the city. I can't believe that you're going against the will of the people. 270,000 people voted in favor of this. More than any of you all that were ever elected here. Ever elected here. And you're going against the will of the people? You all proposed it. Now you're saying we don't have to pay any attention to it. We can do whatever we want. I cannot believe it. It is just hard to believe that I have to go up and fight that. Then we find out when we hire an outside people to look at your rates, things that you guys should have done, but, but it was rushed so fast to you guys to do this that you couldn't have the opportunity. I, I can't blame you because you don't have the opportunity to look at it. It was all done at one time. Everybody was told to vote. We needed to vote. So you voted. And you voted in favor of it. It was a bad thing to do. But the, the, we found out that, you know, most of the water is not consumed by the citizens of Houston. Most of the water is consumed by people outside. Who carries the, the burden of all the capital rates? Citizens of the city of Houston pay the, pay the, the capital rates. they are very little capital rates. You guys sell water at 56 cents a thousand raw water to outside people, to outside the citizens of Houston. The homeowners pay $5.50, $5.60 a thousand. And we're selling water at 56 cents a thousand to other people. And it's improper. There's, they have no capital costs. They have a contributed capital. And then there's no, zero capital capital cost, carrying costs for any of that raw water that you sell, which is 60% of the water that's being sold. It's unbelievable that you're asking us, the people in the city, to carry all these new developments that are outside. The Northwest development out here, we do all the sewer, we do all the water for them. They have thank, no capital Thank cost. you. Your time has expired. Thank you, Mr. Hootsie. Chair recognizes Councilmember Bradford. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Dr. Hootsie, you mentioned that uh, you all voted for it. I want to get the record straight. Some of us didn't. Well, I, I'm, not every, I'm talking about in, in the city council here. The city council in 2004 voted for to put Proposition 2 on the ballot. The mayor proposed it along with city council members. It was not a citizen initiative. It was the city council that did this. This own government body right here put, put Proposition 1, Article 9, Section 20 of the city charter was proposed to the citizens by this, this august body. Thank you. I, I stand correct. I thought you were referring to the water rate increase uh, a, a few months no, ago. No, no, no. Let, let me ask this question. Uh, if you would, uh, for the record and those watching at home, as well as some of the council that doesn't understand perhaps, what is Proposition 2? What is it? And what's the status of it, please? Proposition 2, just to go back, very beginning, the citizens, some 29,000 people or so, signed petitions to control the growth of government to inflation and population, which to put a corral around the whole city government so it wouldn't grow any faster than inflation and population without the vote of a people. People want to grow the government. They can grow it as long, large as they want. That's okay. It's our city. It's our, okay. We're the people. So Mayor, Mayor White didn't like that, so he decided he would have his own proposition, charter change, and they called that Proposition 1. Proposition 1 did three things. It was supposed to control the growth of, of property taxes to inflation and population without a vote of the people. Number two, it was to control water and sewer rates to inflation and population without a vote of the people. And number three, it was to, to raise uh, homestead exemptions for seniors. 
What is the status of Prop 2 today, sir? Proposition, two, proposition 1, just let me tell you what happened. The city would not, would not, would not put it on the city charter, would not put it in the charter. They would not send the results to the Secretary of State. We went to the first Court of Appeals and we got a writ of mandamus from the city so that required uh, Mayor White to do those things, do the statutory things that were required. Then he said, I'm not, still not going to pay any attention to it. And then we sued him in the district court. We won in the district court in a summary judgment. And then the city filed and said we didn't have standing to bring the suit. The 14th Court of Appeals said as we pled the, pled the case that we didn't have standing, but said that we had the ability to go, gave us the ability to go back and replead our standing because they thought we could uh, get standing under another, uh, 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 and we, we pled it. We chose to go to the Supreme Court. On November 18th of 2009, we were heard by the Texas Supreme Court, and we expect to have any Friday to have a, have a resolution on it. We believe that we're going to win because 260,000 people voted for uh, what uh, article, uh, article, I can't even think of what article it is now, but it's a charter change. It's in the charter. It's there, and the city should be paying attention to it. They should be paying attention to it on the budget, and those numbers should be there. Thank should. you, and thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Council Member Chair. Recognizes Council Member Ch Jones. Thank you, Madam, Ch uh, Madam Chair. I'm, I'm thankful that uh, Mr. Feldman, I mean, came to explain the legal stuff. I, I will tell you that it is ordinary to ask for a directed verdict. Some lawyers think it's like malpractice if you don't. So, I mean, almost every case I'm in, I ask for a directed verdict, whether I'm going to get it or not, I mean, for what that's worth. Um, what I'd like the city attorney to ex explain, um, I believe that Prop 1 and Prop 2 are inconsistent with each other. I believe that Prop 1, if I remember correctly, and I do not have them in front of me, um, was proposed by the city. I believe Prop 2 was proposed by the citizens. By the citizens. I believe that Prop 1 received more votes, I believe, than Prop 2. And I believe there is an action in court now to see which one prevails. Yes, I agree with you, Mr. Um, Hotsi, that the, the courts did say you didn't have standing and they offered you to replead. But I would like the city's opinion on the differences between Prop 1 and Prop 2, the arguments we've made, and why we believe we're going to win um, on the Prop 1 argument. And, and I believe we are wait, awaiting a ruling, I, I believe. Well, it would uh, actually take me more than a few minutes to to address that. I, I'd, I'd really, I think it's, we're getting into an area where I'd, I'd prefer to address that with you privately in, in terms of of, of where we see the litigation presently and where we see it uh, going. Uh, Mr. Holsey is correct in terms of the, the actual status. We make a motion to extend time. Yeah, we have a motion to extend the time and a second. Um, any discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. I'll oppose no. Motion carries. Uh, right now, the only issue, I'm sorry. And I, I was saying I believe we have enough votes and um, a motion to suspend the rules requires 10 votes of this body. Um, and. I, uh, I, I would like to interject before I recognize Councilmember Jones again. Um, these issues are extremely important, and I would hope that uh, conversations about them are not only in private. That you would you would uh, supplement with um, written mem memorandum to the uh, to the body. Well, I, I, and, and, uh... <laughs> I, was, I, certainly I, know that, wasn't. I know that's not what you intended. Um, I think it's important, though, to, to specify that for the public and to get answers from nice Councilmember Sullivan and others. Chair recognizes Councilmember Jones. But I was also going to say that any any pleading is public. So what I'm asking is for, because I believe in transparency. I just do. I'm not asking for us to, to, to speculate <laughs> on, on the outcome. But I think it's important because I believe that uh, for a number of us at the table, including myself, that was, I mean, the law is what it is. Obviously, we have two sides that disagree on what the law is, and that's why it's in the courts to let the court tell us who's right. Um, but I would like to know the arguments that we made about why we thought Prop 1 prevails over Prop 2. I'm not asking for you to say what the court is going to do. And I would like that in the open. <laughs> <laughs> I was very uh, politely, but apparently not very adroitly, uh, trying 
to you, tell you that I'm going to need some more time to oh, respond to your your question. Um, I, I will have to, um, since I wasn't city attorney at the time uh, these matters arose, I am familiar with the existing litigation in terms of its procedural posture, and that's just dealing with a standing issue, as Mr. Holtzy uh, had indicated. But what I would be more than pleased to do um, in an open, transparent manner, which is the theme of this administration and the city attorney's office, uh, is to furnish a report to all council members, which addresses the uh, question posed by uh, Council Member Jones, and I'll even be pleased to provide a copy of Mr. Hoxie. Let me ask you, Mr. Feldman. No, I, no, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not yes. here to answer your question, Mr. Hoxie. The reason I ask, and I look forward to your... Our roles to, require council members at the, this time. This is council member time. Council the, member reason, the reason that I ask, and I just share this, one of the reasons that I voted like I voted was when I read the language of the both propositions and, and looked at uh, the pleadings in court and the rulings in court. Um, based on my understanding, it was the one that got the most... Votes. That's correct. Okay, it was the one that got the most votes, and Prop 1 got the most votes. And that's why the city believes, or at least that's what I thought. So, um, what, boil so, down to its very bare essentials, that is correct. And so, th that's what I was talking about. And I actually think this is a healthy, wonderful discussion at the council table. I mean, I, I, so... Um, I'm looking forward to you bringing something for the public to see. I'm looking forward to you putting something in writing for all of us to see. But I just want to be clear that the merits of the case, either on whether the water rate increase violates any propositions or who won out of Prop 1 and Prop 2, the merits have not been determined. So right now it's just sort of a standstill. It's like a timeout to the court gives us direction. And I just wanted to make sure that we knew that. So nobody won or lost yet. And we'll, and, and the courts are going to decide who won or lost. So everything you hear from, from the lectern and everything you hear from here is argument for whosoever side. And the courts will tell us, all of us, what the answer is.